There we're going to go straight now uh, to hear what uh, Jose Borelli, EU foreign policy chief, has to say. In the middle of a terrible crisis, which was not foreseen when we called for this meeting and we prepared and organized it. And thank you very much for, to you, Minister, and to Oman for the excellent organization of this meeting. For us, it has been a very important and fruitful meeting that enhances our partnership and puts us in a positive trajectory, both on the regional and bilateral track. I see a very good attendance of my fellow ministers of the European Union member states and of the European Union Commissioner on Crisis Management, Janis Lenarczyk, and also the European Union Special Representative for the Gulf, the former Italian Minister Luigi Di Maio. This strong presence sends a strong signal of the importance that the European Union attaches to its privileged partnership with the Gulf Cooperation Council and its members. From this point of view, I'm sure we agree the meeting has been a success. This year, Joint Council was a, a particular significance, eh? has produced good results from both sides. Last year, we adopted at the European Union now a strategy for the Gulf, at a time where the evolving dynamics in the world geopolitics makes us to need both each other, a stronger partnership to address our common challenges. These challenges were there before last Saturday and will remain. But last Saturday marked a terrible crisis for the Middle East and for the Gulf. There has been tragic moments in the history of the Middle East. What has happened since Saturday morning is shocking for the suffering that this attack has launched by Hamas as cause and continue to cause to innocent civilians and the negative impact that this will have on the possibility for the two people live side by side in peace and security. Since last Saturday, I spoke to the Palestinian Prime Minister to ask the Palestinian Authority to contribute to immediate cessation of hostilities and promote the interests of the Palestinian people and the aspiration of the whole region to security and stability. I also spoke to the Israeli Foreign Minister Eli Cohen to express the solidarity of the European Union in front of these uh, terrible terrorist attacks, our strong condemnation of violence and terror, and express the need to respect international humanitarian law and to prevent more civilians' life being lost. I spoke to many others in the Gulf and other partners in the region. And today we agreed that the priority is to cease violence and to prevent further regional escalation. It is of utmost importance to ensure the release of hostages as well as the protection of civilians at all times and by all parties. And in order to be concrete, in order to be well understood, let me read with your permission Point 21 of our common declaration, which summarizes what uh, I am saying. The Joint Council expressed deep concern about the grave development of, in Israel and Gaza and condemned all attacks against civilians. It called for the protection of civilians, reminding the party's obligation under the universal principle of international humanitarian law. It further called for restraint, the release of hostages, and allowing access to food, water, and medicines according with international humanitarian law, and stressed the urgent need for a political solution to the crisis to avoid repeating this vicious cycle of violence in the future as it has happened in the past. The European Union and the Gulf Cooperation Council ministers a resolve to deplore violence and urge restraint and calm on all sides and agree to continue consultations and to remain engaged. The Council support the initiative taken by Saudi Arabia, the European Union, the League of Arab States, 
together with Egypt and Jordan, to revive the Middle East peace process. We reiterated our commitment to a two-state solution because it's the only solution. We don't know any other else. Based in 1977 lines in accordance with Arab Peace Initiative and relevant United Nations resolutions. They stress the importance of sustained financial support for UNRWA and to continue the humanitarian and development support for the Palestinians in the occupied territories. This is the result of a long and intense engagement and discussion and frank and open exchange among us. Then there are other issues to which we have been engaged in discussion. I want to stress the importance that we continue giving to the two-state solutions. But uh, at the same time, there are other crises in the world. We talk about uh, not less dangerous. We talk about the aggressions against Ukraine that has uh, unleashed a spiral of violence and devastation. We talk about the situation in Yemen and Sudan that are destabilizing the region as a few examples of the challenges we are called to address together. The latest drone attack on a military camp at the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Yemen border that has killed three Bahrain soldiers, for which I extend our condolences, and the continuous contentious decision taken by the Iraqi court vis-à-vis -vis Kuwait indicate that continuous efforts are imperative for ensuring peace and stability in the region. We want the European Union together with you, dear friends and colleagues from the Council Cooperation, to reaffirm our mutual strong interest in a strategic partnership in order to be able to develop maritime security, to face cyber threats, disaster preparedness, and counter-terrorism. And we welcome the today official launching of a security dialogue and high-level forum for regional security that will take place in Riyadh at the beginning of next year. We discuss about the humanitarian needs worldwide, how to increase and strengthen our cooperation to reinforce the quality, quantity, and effectiveness of our humanitarian assistance, our trade relations remain a key shared interest. We need to increase them in order to stimulate business cooperation. We also discuss about the India Middle East European Economic Europe Economic Corridor launched by the G20 that promises a tremendous opportunity for growth, job creation and shared prosperity. How not? We discuss about climate change and green transition that will be addressed on the, COP, on the COP28, where we will be working in cooperation. And finally, we reiterated the importance of uh, fostering people-to-people -people contacts as the only effective means to promote, to promote inclusive societies, funding a mutual understanding and respect for diversity, fighting against any kind of uh, hate, and founded in mutual respect for diversity from the point of view of religions, ethnicity, and whoever differences are among human beings, because at the end we remain, all of us, human beings. Thank you. Thank you.